Hey everybody, welcome to the channel today. I hope you all enjoyed the debut of the 1993 Silverado that we did a full restoration LT410 speed swap. Truck turned out amazing. The response that I got from everyone was, it was tremendous, it, it was awesome. Uh, it makes me wanna do another one. What I wanted to do was, I wanted to make a video that basically summed up the whole build from start to finish. That way y'all could see just how much work that uh, my shop killer performance put in this truck and really made my vision in my head become a reality with this truck. And uh, you know, they knocked it out of the park. This video is gonna be a little bit long, but it's definitely gonna be worth the watch. You can probably learn a few things, especially if you're wanting to build one of these trucks for yourself. And uh, the parts that we used, we go in real big detail on everything we did. I'm gonna cut up the video though to make it, you know, short but still show everything but it'll still be probably about an hour and a half long i don't know we'll see i'm getting ready to start editing it right now and uh here's the truck build from start to finish hope you all enjoy it make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to let you know whenever i post a new video Okay, today is day one of the teal truck build and uh, just put it up in the air. I'm gonna just show y'all what we're working with underneath the truck, what it looks like now, because it's gonna look drastically different here in about another month. So let's look underneath of it right now and see what we got going. So here we go. This is underneath of the 93 teal truck. As you can see, it's pretty much all stock. It looks like it does have a uh, dual exhaust, at least dual outlet exhaust on there. Uh, so that looks decently new, not too old. <clears throat> but everything under here looks really clean. Uh, the rust that you do see is just surface rust. That's going to be pretty common on everything. Look at these old Beltex. I mean, these Beltex are from probably the mid-90s, which is pretty cool. It's already got a C-notch in it. The kit that we have is uh, sitting right outside the, oh no, sitting right there from QA1, that's all of our QA1 suspension stuff. Steve's building a shelf for all the stuff that we're gonna have uh, for this build, but these tailpipes and stuff are gonna be coming off. That is not gonna be on the truck no more. We actually have a uh, full 10 bolt, uh, eight and a half inch 10 bolt rebuild kit. So we're gonna have bigger axles in it, stronger axles. We're gonna have a true track. We're changing the gears in it. And then we're also gonna have this housing all redone in a nice black finish. Lee springs are going to be going away uh, for this new QA1 suspension. We have an air motive uh, pump that goes in the factory gas tank. So the factory gas tank will be staying. Obviously, we'll have a new drive shaft with the 10 speed in here. This cross member, we're supposed to be able to be able to use this factory cross member with the 10 speed swap. So we won't have to change that. Uh, and then we go up here. Obviously, the engine, all this stuff is going to be redone. Let me get a light here. So all this will all be new when we uh, put this thing back together. So that'll be pretty good. Looks like we did spring some kind of a leak here. I let all the AC. Oh, never mind. Steven said he let all the AC out. So that's all the AC refrigerant. Uh, but the truck will still have AC. It's got a, gonna have a brand new AC uh, compressor on that new LT4 over there. So, but all this stuff will all be new once we uh, pull it apart and uh, get this frame powder coated. We are gonna go with the frame powder coat. Um, so not a poor 15 job like we were talking about. It is gonna be a full sandblast powder coat on the frame, which will look really nice. You can see it's still got the factory catalytic converter on there. Um, looks like a factory fuel filter. So all this fuel line and everything is gonna be replaced too. So none of that will be on there. Pretty crazy stuff, guys. Engine's clean though. As you can see, it doesn't even leak a drop. Thing is bone dry. Guy took really good care of this truck. Look at that, Steve. The rear end doesn't even seep grease. Yeah, the whole <laughs> thing's sealed. It's crazy. Absolutely yeah, I've nuts. I've never seen orange uh, Freon die. I still have the original Freon in it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Damn. Well, cool. So this is uh, the bottom of the teal truck before we get started.
take notes because it's going to look a lot different when we're done. Okay, we just got the truck bed off and uh, here's what it looks like. Looks pretty good. As you can see here, went and got the bed, got some saw horses. We got it sitting down on those. Perfect spot for the bed to sit. Now, uh, Steven's gonna work on uh, basically stripping this down. We're gonna get this cab off next. We gotta take apart the whole front core support and uh, we'll get the cab off and then uh, basically strip this frame down and get it ready for uh, sandblasting and powder coating. been a while since that yeah. guy's seen low eye today yeah oh we 30 years steven found a new uh use for our uh, 55 gallon drum fuel pumps it's the broken one <laughs> it's the broken one <laughs> still pumps though still using it got the brakes here for the truck these are i believe the front rotors got the big dogs Dang. Ah. And then uh, there will be a hub that bolts to these that Little Shop made the pillow hub. As you can see, they're pretty big. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pat, this is, th these are some of our brackets that they provide. These are the hats that go in the middle of the rotor. They basically, they're a two-piece rotor. Now be the hub part of the rotor. Got the exhaust off. We just ended up basically cutting it. And uh, now we got the drive shaft going here. Off she goes. We got a new Billet 1350 yoke for the rear end, obviously, when we upgrade everything. Ooh, there it is. That hasn't been out in a while. No, probably ever. <laughs> <laughs> that drive shaft will be junk, too. The tank out. Sitting right here. It's probably like a 20-gallon tank, I would say. Got the front grill off now. Uh, we're going to start disassembling this front clip and uh, start working on getting this cab off the frame. Pretty smooth, pretty smooth. All right. Does the light go your way? Yeah, it's all good. Not C6ZR1 light. So here we go. We got a completely stock 93 Chevy truck right here. Everything is in really good shape, guys. I mean, really, the only dirt you see is just dust. Um, it almost kind of looks brand new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at these oh, really? hoses and stuff. I mean, this stuff is like in pristine shape. Was he? Yeah. yeah. Look like some of the bolts were brand oh, new. Oh, you know? dang. He was blinging it. Boy, he was getting in there with the freaking testers model paint. Painting them bolts. Keeping it clean. Yeah. Keeping it clean. Like painted the threads. Look at all these stickers, guys. They all look like brand new still. Yeah, that's cool to see them. In We're going to have to save now. these parts. These are OE brand new parts right here. Still got the factory tie on the radiator hose. Oh, yeah. I mean, those are hardly on anything because yeah. when people replace these hoses, those never go back on. Yep. We got to keep the hood light too. Yes. yes. That's got to stay. Forever. It's got to stay. She ain't going back. No, we ain't. <laughs> See, everyone, new Mustangs still have these, but this is 2020, almost 2021. We are going to have spring-loaded hood. Additional plumbing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, there it is.
undressing these fenders. Oh yeah, disconnecting. Disconnecting a bunch of harnesses. And yeah. Cylinder. Yeah, because the the new brake kit's gonna have that new. I think it still uses the lines, like yeah. these lines, but this is different. Got that out of the way. Lay it right there. Oh, it's oh, missing a bolt? Yeah, this bolt was missing. What the hell? So it was kind of cocked in there, getting a little go, breeze inside. We're going to have to go get our money back. <laughs> I think that's it. All right. That's not bad. I wonder why that... That's almost like it'd be missing from the factory. Yeah. Because this thing ain't been touched. Yeah, I dropped it. Kept on rolling. <laughs> there it goes. Ooh, that's a risky process here. I'll hold it. Oh. <laughs> kind of self-detaches. Wow. Talk about a puzzle. Are they that heavy? No. no pretty it's, light? It's, pretty it's good steel, nice. though. So here we got the truck basically with no front end on it. And uh, tomorrow we'll work on getting the cab off. Got to get some 2 by 4s to run through there. So that way we can raise the cab up on the lift and leave the frame down. Because right now the only lifting points are from the frame. So we want to leave the frame on, frame on the ground. We'll get the engine out of it, transmission out of it, pull off all the suspension stuff, and basically get ready for uh, take this thing over to get sandblasted and powder coated. Okay. Yeah. There it comes. Take it <laughs> off in chunks. What? Perfect time for a cam swap. <laughs> yeah. So we just got finished with day one of the teal truck teardown. Got pretty far. Basically, we're at the point now of just a couple more little things, and then the cab's going to come off the frame, and it'll be just a rolling frame at that point, and then we'll get everything torn off of it, ready for powder coat and sandblasting. Okay, this is day two of the teal truck build, and uh, we're just getting ready to pull the cab off right now. Went and got some 4x4s up at Home Depot to basically hold the cab on the lift pucks while the frame sits on the ground on the wheels and tires. Once we get this cab off, we'll be uh, kind of in a really good spot. We can just start stripping the frame down and basically getting the frame ready to go to powder coat and sandblasting. But here's what we got going on right now. So we got the four by four boards here. We're probably gonna cut them down. Steven's over there measuring how long they need to be. Basically, they're just gonna slide right in through there the other side and then we're going to basically lift up where you see where the puck's at now it'll lift the body off of the frame and it'll just be the frame sitting there all right you're good all right looks like we got the cab on we actually didn't even have to use boards cobra there sounds good Oh yeah, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're good. There ain't nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. It's very steady up there, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Roller chassis. Steve, is this the first time you've done this? Like, complete complete truck and everything off a of frame? I did frame swaps at the dealership. Oh, you did? Yeah. So I this isn't your this isn't your first radio, rodeo. <laughs> this is a little more tedious. Yeah, true. I did an express van, a diesel truck, and a Jeep. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, it's nice. Like a... I don't even know what So the way we lifted up the cab, there's there's pinch welds on both the front and back. We just basically set the lift to where obviously this wouldn't hit the cab. So look how close it is. It's close, but it ain't going to move. These pinch welds are going to be good. They're nice sturdy point to uh, lift up the cab. The cab's not super heavy, but it probably weighs at least 500 or so pounds. But look how clean this thing is underneath here. It is spotless. You don't even really have to do much cleaning. 
I mean, it's glass cleaner. Yeah, really. You don't even have to get crazy with it. Awesome. So, looks like uh, Steve is taping where the wheels are at, so that way when we put it all back together, we at least kind of have an idea. So that way we can just drop the cab right down on the frame. We got original belts and hoses on this bad boy too. Yeah. Is someone on their way? I could just put it in the truck. <laughs> right? <laughs> no one yet. Got the motor mounts here. Uh, those are obviously coming off. It's got the clamshell motor mounts. Almost look like the old F body motor mounts. Same deals. Got the engine out of the way. Everything looks really clean though. Um, not too much to go here. We'll strip this down. We're going to see what we can do about the steering and stuff to kind of make it look a little nicer once we get the truck all together. Basically, everything that you see here is getting replaced with brand new stuff uh, from front to back besides the steering. So kind of want to complement the rest of everything else we're doing with nice new steering parts, at least power coated or something, something make them look a little bit better. Got the cab mounts there. They look pretty good, Steve. Oh, yeah. We can yeah. roll them. Just clean them yeah, up. Just clean them up. Yeah. Cool. We're going to put all new brake lines on it. So the truck's getting a full brake line. Uh, LMC truck, they make a full pre bent stainless steel brake line kit. So we're going to put that on there while we have everything apart. Uh, the new uh, Little Shop uh, 14 inch rear disc brace that we're putting on from Willwood, they actually have the e brake. Uh, integrated in the disc brake like a normal new car does so that's pretty cool so we'll still have an e-brake on the truck and uh probably start getting some of this qa1 stuff once we get this see what we need to cut off because we want everything stripped off that's not getting powder coated or that we don't want on the frame so we'll have to cut all that stuff off but i know the leaf springs are coming off i believe this bracket comes off i don't know if it still reuses the back one I don't think it would. I don't know what else would be back there. Uh, rear end housing is coming off. We'll have it sandblasted and powder coated as well because we got all new internals for the 10 bolt there, new axles, tree track, gears. We're gonna go with a 309 gear being that we're gonna have a 10 speed in the truck now. Uh, so that'll be a good gear for it. Just to put in perspective, a uh, 2019 ZL1 like out there, which is what the motor came out of, um, it's got a 285 rear gear in it. So if we put a 309 this, that'll be pretty close. Also got bigger wheels and tires. Um, Mustangs, they got the 10 speed. Some of them come with a 355 rear gear. So you can get pretty crazy with the 10 speeds, but we want to have a nice cruiser here. So 309 gear is going to be our best bet. So I still got the OEM retainers. Yeah. So the trick is I'll just words, bend them up and never been a clean and adjust. No, probably not. Because <laughs> I would not put these back on. <laughs> I guarantee if they came into cable Dahmer service about five years ago, they had got a clean and adjust on these bad boys. Yeah. So what we're seeing is by the retainers there, right? When when these things are going down the assembly line. They put these on there so that way the brakes stay on the truck before they put wheels on. Yep. And that's what these little deals are. They basically go down on the stud and hold that brake uh, drum on there. Well, they're still on there. So that means these things have never been off before. It's pretty cool. Taking the axles out. No twist. No. <laughs> they would've. Here you go, Wally. Twist and broke. They would have been snapped. Yeah. That LT4 right over here. We got the QA1 suspension all getting laid out, making sure everything's here. Let's see what we got. This is the brand new QA1 front and rear coilover suspension. It deletes the leaf springs and all the front A arms, the shock over spring design, everything. It's it's a really nice kit. We'll see how it is. All right, so here is the kit. It's in a comes in a few different boxes here. It looks like this is a lot of the rear stuff. As you can see, it replaces the rear cover um, and gives the truck like a torque arm style suspension, a lot like a uh, F-body. You know, uh, it's going to have a torque arm and a panhard rod. Um, 
It's got different shock mounts on it. Uh, everything's crazily adjustable. I mean, all the different points you can put the shocks at, the yeah, torque the arm. Mounts. Yeah, those, those are the shock That's mounts the there. You can see where all the different adjustabilities are with the shock mounts. Pan hard adjustment. Yep, so that's going to go where the C notch is on the current frame. Uh, so we'll have to take that old Beltec one off, obviously re drill some new holes, and uh, get that new mount on the frame. Um, got a lot of different joints here. Yeah, these are the front arms. Oh, those front are the front, front forward arms. Front forward arms, yeah. So it's got lower here. control arms like a uh, F body style suspension. It's going to be a real nice kit. This will be good for drag racing and for the street. Um, a little bit more drag racing friendly suspension versus the Ride Tech uh, kit that just came out. That's why we went with this kit for this truck uh, because we will be uh, doing some racing uh, race week and stuff with this truck when it's all finished up. Got the rear end housing off, ready to get cleaned up, sandblasted. We do have to cut the shock mounts off of it, so we'll do that before we uh, powder coat it and all that good stuff. Frame's pretty much stripped down to nothing in the in the back. Still got to do the front. Um, we have all the shocks over here. Here is the A-arms for the front. Real nice tubular A-arms. Um, it comes with the spanner wrenches to adjust the shocks. Uh, the shocks are obviously in the boxes still. We got to put those together. So a lot of parts that come with this kit. And I think Steve was looking. There's a bar that we're trying to find. Yeah. We can't find it anywhere in the kit. So... We're going to have to go through and see if we can find it. If not, I'm going to have to give QA1 a call. And there, there's the shocks there. We got some uh, double adjustables, coilovers, front and rear. So, got some pretty nice shocks. Springs are just silver? Yeah, I think they're just silver. There's all the old stuff there. Rear, I think, yeah, this front one's already open. So we do have to cut this bracket off. Um, yep. This bracket's got to cut, be cut off. This one's got to be cut off. Yep. Uh, so basically it's going to be a bare frame back here and uh, QA1 gives you all the templates and everything on how to do it. We're not going to do a really a crazy how-to video on this suspension because there's already a few more on YouTube. Not as cool as ours, but you know this is a, a really neat suspension. We will have a lot of it, how we put it together. So enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but we are just kind of getting everything kind of mapped out, seeing how everything's going to go. Yeah, these are cool. They can, they made these brackets to where you could do it with the bed on. If you can't take your bed off. That's so awesome. Kind of loop from the bottom. Oh, uh, okay. So you can do this whole kit with the bed on. That's what they said. Man. Yeah. Yeah, it almost call it a bolt on kit. It would almost be easier just to remove the bed. It only took us what 20 yeah. minutes to take the bed <laughs> off. This one would probably be really hard with the bed on because you have yeah, to no cut kidding. this or to torch whatever. Yeah, so do. basically what we're saying is if you can take the bed off, just take the bed off. Yeah, it's easy. With the QA1 kit. Um, I have been doing some research, and I did find a uh, rack and pinion steering that they make for nice. these. And then they also make a brace that goes right here that basically ties in the transmission cross member and stiffens up the whole middle of the frame. Nice. So we're probably going to extra strength is good. end up doing that. Uh, so, but yeah, I think it's going to be good. I just need to find that bar. Hopefully we didn't get shorted. Yeah, well, if we did, we'll give QA1 a, a call. <laughs> Steven just took off the old original Beltec C-notch brackets off of the frame here. And uh, look, it's still got, that's how new the frame was whenever that kit went on. Look how new that is. Okay, we got the axle all done. Uh, got the brackets cut off and smoothed this thing's ready to go to uh, our powder coater right now so we'll take that went ahead and put the cover on there so that way it doesn't get anything inside the the diff there and then we'll have to close the ends up which our powder coater will do all that for us uh, these are the new c-notch parts from the qa1 kit we're kind of mocking those up he's going to get the holes drilled and then we're going to start cutting the factory brackets off the frame kind of worked out nice like the, the old one was a little bigger 
so we might lose a hole but yeah. one hole on each side lined up and they're in the exact same spot. oh perfect so, yeah i think i think it'll be fine yeah like i measured to hold a hole on each side and yeah it's, it's pretty spot on nice so i think that's where they're gonna go is drill the holes and get all lined up get her powder coated up yeah Okay, so we got the basically all the brackets off. We got one more to cut off right there. Um, and then we can put the C-notch things on the brackets over here. That I was showing you all a while ago on the video that everything kind of mounts to on this QA1 kit. Steven's been getting getting dirty today. Yeah, knocking all the dirt off the frame. Yeah. Yeah, we just need to cut three more, three or four more rivets on this bracket. Yeah. And that's it. And then knock the front end off. and. Yeah, take the front end apart, and then I think we just need to drill for each C-notch. That one bracket that we're missing goes like right here. Okay. And then four holes here. That's it. Everything else bolts together. Nice. Well, it'll be kind of nice that you're doing all this now because when we get it back, you can just start bolting stuff on. Yeah, everything will be good. Okay, so we're beginning day four of uh, the OBS build. This is the fourth day we've been working on the truck. And uh, we are working on drilling all the holes for the QA1 uh, C-notch uh, frame insert that goes in. Uh, that also has all the brackets for the lower control arms and the panhard bar and all that good stuff. Uh, so we'll go see what we got going on right now. Just drilling some holes, nothing crazy. Uh, just making sure the suspension fits before we have this frame nicely powder coated and all that good stuff. As you can see, Steven's got a bunch of holes here he has to drill out. And uh, I did get a hold of the Elevated Concepts guys. Um, they did have a uh, steering kit that was almost done uh, that they're making for stock. And uh, luckily, called them at the right time. So they're going to have us a uh, rack and pinion kit. Hopefully uh, sometime next week. Um, so we're going to do the full rack and pinion. And then we're also doing the solid uh, elevated concepts mounts. And then he's uh, also got a uh, transmission brace um, for the frame that also holds the transmission. So that'll brace the frame up really nicely. And then addition to the QA1 brace, this frame is going to be real nice and braced. And no worries of flex there in the middle of the frame because it's all going to be welded on each side. Uh, it'll look really nice. All right, right now, starting to disassemble the front end. Basically, just got upper, lower arms, the shocks, sway bar, and the steering to uh, remove. Steering will not be going back on the truck. It's going to be uh, donezo. We got that rack and pinion coming from Elevated Concepts. And all this other suspension is getting replaced. So not going to have any of it anymore. Let's see if this will come out chunk. Look at that, all one piece. Nice. We found ourselves a nest of some sort inside there. We're actually going to re uh, we're going to sandblast those and repowder coat those and actually reuse those spindles. We're actually going to be doing the QA1 stage two front end, which is using the factory shock mounts on the top. So we're not going to have to cut this all out. Uh, and then it uses the same shock mount that it uses right now. So that's the kit that we're using on the front. <laughs> 
front end is uh, officially completely stripped down. Pretty much every single thing is off this frame except the transmission cross member. Getting ready to pop that off right now. Uh, this is going to be sandblasting day for the truck frame. And uh, we have Nick Savage with us. Woo, you know the deal. We have Potter. And then we have uh, old John back there. John's in a great mood today. <laughs> uh, we got the frame in the in the back of the trailer right now. It was easy to load. Right now we're on our way over to uh, our friend Mike Fisher's right now. And our buddy Chris Gavert that does a lot of our powder coating is actually going to be sandblasting this thing outside. 60 degree day today, so perfect day to do some sandblasting on the frame so we're gonna head there right now and unload the frame we're back here about 115 pick it back up right all right so we got the frame here and uh chris over here is gonna sandblast it for us chris what are you what are you thinking two three hours three four three, three hours so he said basically the hardest part is just getting this gummy nasty coating off of it with the sand but should go pretty smooth it's in good shape so yeah All right, we went to lunch, just came back, and Chris has got a lot done on the frame. Check it out, it looks pretty good. All right, here's what the frame looks like. All finished up, it's pretty nice. The shadows from the trees are making it look like it's real spotty, but it's really not. Nick gets down there with his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nick, get going. Good job. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, don't, don't spit on it. Oh, well, that's for the girls later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just got the rear end back from powder coat Chris got it sandblasted and powder coated for us and he also did the, the original Beltec spindles that were on the truck and they look brand new check it out the rear end looks really good here's our rear end I had it done in uh, gloss black uh, turned out really nice looks basically like a brand new brand new housing and then those spindles if you remember they were super rusted now they look brand new again. So, using the spindles that have been on the truck since 94. So it's pretty cool. We got those things uh, all done and refinished. So those are gonna go back on the truck. Got the frame at the powder coaters right now. Uh, looking like it's gonna be done today possibly, but uh, we're getting ready to head to Florida. so. Not sure what else we're gonna have for the truck this week. Um, I am gonna get the rear end and all the new goodies to go in the rear end over to Nichols, which is our guy that does all of our transmission stuff. He is actually going to uh, get this rear end set up for us and uh, get it all assembled. And if it needs any bearings and stuff pressed in, he's gonna do all that as well. All right, so I've went over this before, but I'll go through it in this video since we're at that point. We got an Eaton true track differential there uh, we got some 309 richmond gears uh, being that there's a 10 speed going to be going in the truck that 309 gear will be really good also got a uh, yukon front 1350 yoke strange rebuild kit with all new bearings and the shims and stuff and then we got some yukon uh heavy duty axles that are going to be going in it uh this should get the rear end pretty solid for the power that we're going after and what we're doing with the truck it'll actually be really good all right we got the frame here it looks really good how long did it take you guys uh full day full day any issues no, just the to... just that yeah. uh liner running out of it yeah but it cleaned up really nice yeah look at this guys this looks really nice we're gonna get this thing loaded up and uh get to the shop start assembly right now we got the frame back in the shop and uh, now is the time when all the assembly starts, all the new parts go on. Look how beautiful this thing is. Ah, oh, it turned out so good. Freaking powder coat. 
Oh, it was the way to go for sure. It was worth the extra time and effort to uh, do this on the frame. We're laying out all the front suspension components right now. This is all part of the QA1 kit. This is gonna be the level two front coilover kit. So it's not a true through the shock, uh, through the frame coilover like on the stage three. This is using the factory shock mounts on the frame. So the shock's still gonna come up through here and bolt to the top. Uh, but it is gonna be using a, a QA1 uh, fully adjustable shock. And then we got upper and uh, or upper and lower tubular control arms we got our spindles over here that we got back from uh, powder coat ready to go and then we also have a uh, little shop 16 inch yes 16 inch front willwood brake kit that uh, is going to be going on the front of this truck 16 inches steve that's bigger than uh well about the same size that's... as a brand new ZR zl1 camaro zr1 corvette yeah. So those are some. C706 has 16 inch Yes. Drivers. Yeah. The carbon ones. Yeah. The carbon. You got to get the carbon ones. But yeah, these are a pretty nice kit here. So Steve's just getting it all laid out and uh, going to start throwing some parts on this thing. Got the front uh, QA1 A arms on. We we're actually missing our uh, shock mounts that go here. So we couldn't assemble the whole front end right now. But we called QA1. Once again, they got us set up with what we needed. Uh, so we'll have that stuff in a couple days. So Steven's going to go back here and start getting the rear stuff that we can get all on because we're still missing that one bracket, uh, from them. So we'll be getting that shortly and, uh, yeah, starting to come together. So we got our first new parts, did some cleaning up underneath here. Didn't really need much, but you can see how nice this thing is. We're not going to paint it or nothing. It's just going to stay like this because it looks so cool in factory original. I don't want to mess it up by clear coating it or putting paint on it. Powder coat filled some of the holes. Of course it did. <laughs> Yeah, finish them off by torquing the bolts to 49 foot pounds. Yep. That's what Steve's doing right now. We've been moving quite a bit on the truck today with what we can do. Uh, the, the couple little parts that we don't have are really hanging us up right now, but we'll have them hopefully in the next day or two. Uh, but we have got a lot of stuff done that we can. Uh, check it out, here it all is. So we got the QA1 brace. This goes on the frame up here. The new brace that we'll have in the middle of the frame is gonna basically go straight across, have like an X in it with the trans cross member and drive shaft loop. Uh, but this is an extra brace that's on here for the QA1 kit. We also got the QA1, uh, I believe that's a lower control arm uh, adjuster mounts right there. Got the C-notch uh, frames in. Then on the other side over here, we also got the other uh, adjustable for the lower control arms. And this has the brake lines through there. Is that correct? Yeah, e-brake cables. E-brake cables are gonna go through there. Uh, so yeah, looking pretty good. Just kind of getting out some of the brake uh, part kits from Little Shop here. Uh, this is gonna be on the front. Um, as you can see, we're gonna have an actual normal style hub for the rotor to slide onto here. Look at this piece of billet just looks too nice to go on the truck and it's also got these caps that go on the end we did just check though and the weld center cap will actually slide over this which is nice so we'll have uh, the center caps on the wheels again uh, for the front of the truck um, the way these were set up we could not get the weld center cap to fit over these so um, we should be good now though with the, the new uh, little shop hubs came with all new bearings and then uh, the rest of the brake kit's still in the boxes, but I just want to show y'all how nice this part was. Good grief. All right, putting the front coilover in right now. As you can see, Steven's getting it. Best way to do it is put the shock up in first. Uh, make sure you extend the rod out of the shock. It comes pretty compressed. And then uh, once you get the top nut done, then you uh, put the lower control arm on, put the bolt through. That's the easiest way to get that front shock slash coilover in the truck and now she's on
We've got to bolt the brakes together. We're gonna to put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. It does say we need someone experienced doing this, so I don't know if Steven's gonna get the cut. We're gonna to have to get Curtis over here to come do this. Curtis has a brake certification. Yeah, hold on, let me pull up. We did pull the six piston <laughs> calipers out of the package. Yeah, those things are massive. Just put in perspective, that's a 16 inch rotor. That's my hand in there. So yeah, big boys. All right, got the first rotor kind of completed here you can see there this is the rear rotor so it's got a pretty big hat on there that's what it looks like all done up and then, uh, we just gotta do the front rotors now hey steven the time burglar's here oh no the snap-on guy you guys are done for the day i owe money should you're... i run yeah <laughs> here you can go right out that door right there i'll say you're off damn steven you better not hurt my freshly powder coated spindle here we might have to oh Cut it Cut. New uh, rear diff all assembled, ready to go on the frame with all the new suspension over here. Uh, we'll tackle that tomorrow. This is going to be the end of uh, day six. So uh, we're going to start day seven tomorrow with uh, getting the brakes all finished up, spindles mounted, and have this thing almost rolling. Right? Getting the e-brake shoes on right now. This is another part of the little shop brake conversion for these OBS trucks. This is so we can run a factory style brake e-brake shoes and the brand new uh, Willwood brake kit. But as you can see, we got the axle out right now. Steve had to uh, fit the axles with the new studs that we got. And we had to drill out the brake rotors down there for the, for the parking shoe. Yeah, so the parking shoe goes inside that hat there. That is also a little shop made part uh, that bolts into the Willwood rotor. So we're gonna get this other side done right here and then uh, we'll basically start assembling. We got the brand new line kit from LMC Truck. It's a factory replacement line kit, but might as well have done new stainless steel lines while we're here. And then uh, we got the rear diff cover right there that's got the torque arm mounts for the new QA1 suspension. We got the rear caliper bracket on this side. It basically bolts right up to the e-brake shoe bracket that's on there and uh, as you can see the caliper will slide on now that's what these studs are sticking out for right now not a you know a normal style caliper it goes bolts so it goes through the back these actually have the studs that come out got the other side on now and uh steven is going to put the axles in we got the studs on this is actually a stud that uh, I used on the front of the ZL1, so it ended up being about the same size, and they're long enough to where we won't have any stud issues with the welds on there. Slipping them in, then he's gonna lock them in right through here. You'll see the axle start to come through. This is that brand new Eaton diff that we put in here. This is a 10 bolt, eight and a half inch rear end, but when these things are built up, they actually uh, hold up pretty well to power. Get close. Oh yeah. And then we got the rear disc brakes mounted on the, the 10 bolt for the first time in its life. So we have one of our front spindles done here. As you can see, it's got a normal normal hub on it now that we can slide the brake rotor on and off which that is a, a little shop piece that comes with their brake kit and we also have the trimmed ears for the billet bracket to go on for the willwood brake caliper slowly but surely pretty, we're pretty getting cool there. bracket so to adapt the two from a drum to a disc brake they put this little bracket right here which if you don't have the parking brake you can put it on the top we figured out that you put it on the bottom 
goes here, you bend your hard line into that, and then your flex hose will run under and then into right the back into the, of the caliper. caliper. That's cool. It's pretty nice. Yeah. All stain everything's stainless now. Yeah. Front to back. Nice. Little shop brackets that bolt to the factory spindle that we had to cut the ears off earlier in the video. Uh, Steve got them all repainted back up. They look nice. Got a big old six piston Willwood caliper to go on those fronts there. We just got the brakes on the truck and uh, we bolted them on. Check these things out. These things look incredible bolted on. There they are right there, the big massive 16 inch Willwoods. And the next thing I wanna check is if the, the welds fit, cause we had the welds built. We sent them the specs from these calipers. These are big, big rotors here. So uh, we'll go grab one of the welds real quick and see if it fits on here. All right, got the wheels on and they do fit. caliper isn't totally bolted down yeah yeah we don't have everything it totally does. bolted down but yeah everything clears just fine we could probably actually went with a smaller pad on the on the wheels just to be safe that it gave the wheel a little bit more dish but these will work perfect for what we're doing look how big those brakes are in there though geez louise phillips that's a 20 inch wheel and yeah. it fills the whole wheel up <laughs> a little comparison yeah that's crazy. Right now we're getting the, the brake line kit on the truck. Uh, we have all the front QA1 suspension stuff on, the big uh, 16 inch uh, Willwood little shop brake kit on the front of the truck right now. Just kind of getting this thing tidied up while we're waiting on some very, very important parts to come in, like our motor mounts, our rack and pinion kit, and our middle brace that goes here that holds the transmission and all that good stuff. So just kind of hung up waiting on a few parts, but uh, hopefully they are coming and we can keep on rolling right along with this project here. This is day eight, this truck started, drove on the rack and uh, we're at this point on day eight. That's a lot of work that's been done in a short amount of time. Basically this rolling chassis is gonna be brand new. Every single nut and bolt on this uh, chassis is gonna be new and the best of the best that you can buy. Got the lower control arms mounted on. We're just getting ready to put this rear end on the frame for the first time since we got it all powder coated. We have the torque arm over here. It's all rod end mount. This end though is mounting to that bracket right there, that cross brace bracket that QA1 supplies you with. Uh, but really, we got this thing ready to go. We're gonna get this uh, rear diff lifted off the bench there and over on the ground to put it on some jack stands. There it is, sitting down in there. Got the coilovers on, those are double adjustable. QA1s there. As you can see it's got the lower control arm, then the torque arm's gonna go from there to right there. Once that all on it, actually hooks to the rear cover, QA1 sends a rear cover with the rear end setup. And we went ahead and adjusted for the seven inch drop. QA1 sends with the instructions what the notches are on the drop. This one's gonna be a seven inch drop. So it's gonna be real nice and low to the ground, yeah. tucking that nice weld up in the up in the bed there. You see how close the rear end is in the notch already? Yeah. On the yeah, I know, right? Of course, it, it really won't have a lot of movement with those coilovers. Yeah. It'll be a really nice stiff suspension have this thing possibly sitting on the ground if we get everything, which will be really cool. And then the fun part begins of engine install. Yeah. And wiring and all the My fun, favorite. all wiring. the fun stuff. <laughs> QA1 sticker. Hey, hey now. whoever's assembling this Look stuff. Look at that one too. Yeah, they put the <laughs> QA1 stickers <laughs> upside down. That's no problem though. It's just sticker. We can take it off and put another one on there. Yeah, it's on the table. We went ahead and slipped one of the rear brake rotors on. Now we're gonna slip the caliper on, see what it all looks like. When you're building a building something like this, it's always cool to mock up the stuff before you're 100%. That way you can kind of get a visual of what it's gonna be like when it's all said and done. Is there supposed to be a spacer back yeah. there? Yeah, okay. yeah, there will be. Is it just on the rotor? Yeah. Look at that, everybody. Throw a rear wheel on to make sure it clears Dang. everything. Let's grab one. Went ahead and got one of the welds on here. We're gonna 
see how it fits with the brakes. I think it'll be all right going by the front one that we fit on there last night. Oh yeah. Plenty of room. Looks perfect. Look at the studs oh, yeah. too. We got some. You got a lot of room. Oh you can yeah. Put a space it's going to pass NHRA tech. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's doing good. We got most of the rear end mocked up right mm -hmm. now and there's really no words for it. It looks amazing. Uh, this is a real nice setup here with the brakes and everything mocked up. Once we get the, the parts from Little Shop, hopefully tomorrow, we can really get this rear end buttoned up and uh, start installing the LT4 over there. Uh, we did see the rack and pinion, but just the rack and pinion show up uh, from Elevated Concepts. This was drop shipped. We're still waiting on all the bracketry and all that good stuff. So hopefully that stuff shows up soon. That way we can kind of get the steering and stuff mocked up and bolted up. But I mean, this, this truck's going to look insane from the back. I mean, you can see there, you're going to be able to see the coilovers and all the cool bars going across. We still got to put the, the sway bar on the rear sway bar from QA one. This is just a really nice kit though. Turned out really good. We got the front core support off the truck right here. We started talking about it and uh, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this thing and actually have this sandblasted and powder coated gloss black to match the frame over here. It's definitely showing some age on it. So we've gone this far with the truck on making everything perfect. Might as well just keep on going. Uh, today is the day that we're actually gonna probably start getting the engine set in the frame. Uh, we got all the suspension on the truck all done, uh, you know, but, uh, right now we're getting LT4 ready. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about this engine and what's done to it. Here it is. Okay. This is going to be our LT4. We have the supercharger sitting right here. This is a Joker's full tilt ported LT4 blower it is it is off a, uh, 2018 ZL1. As you can see, it's got me on there. Spells my last name wrong every time. Dang it. Jokers. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, we got a 230 grip tech pulley on this, got a 103 millimeter throttle body over here. You can see it's got completely stock heads in it. These are just stock LT4 heads. It does have a, a Texas speed LT4 supercharged cam in it, uh, dual valve springs. It's got Johnson lifters in it, uh, hardened push rods. We have an ATI lower here. This is a 945 lower, so a pretty good size lower. And then we got a Drive Junkie uh, front accessory drive kit here. It's got an alternator power steering pump because these cars don't come with uh, uh, normal hydraulic steering from the factory. So this accessory kit does have the normal standard uh, power steering pump for this truck over here. And then we got an AC compressor over here. This is the part I'm worried about down here. I'm not sure if that's gonna fit, uh, but we're about to find out here in a few minutes. I do have a factory water pump here. I had it powder coated black to kind of match the rest of the accessories. It turned out really well. Um, so that's basically the, the gist of this LT4. Um, should make around 800 horse to the tire. So really powerful motor. We got some speed engineering headers over here. I wish we could have probably done some, uh, you know, completely custom headers on this, but to stick with the, the theme of this build, that is, this stuff is everything that someone can buy uh, and do themselves, just like the suspension, uh, the brakes. This is all stuff anyone can buy and do yourself. So that's the cool thing about this build that we're doing on the channel. So we're going to go ahead and get this engine set up and uh, get it uh, set down in the frame. It's going to come together. Now. Steve, it looks like you got yourself <laughs> in a little pickle here. Yeah. Well, this is the factory harness. And what do you got to take off the factory harness so for this is the whole engine harness from in the cab to the PCM all the way around to back into the cab for the gauges. Gotcha. And that's a connector that goes yeah, so. right up there. Yep. There. And then the hole. So I, if you see this, this is like hot glue that they run all the wires into waterproof through this. That's the grommet that goes to the passenger side. So we're going to try to save this and put the spear tech harness through this to get it all cleaned up. Okay. Whatever we need to do to waterproof it, it has a seal. But I'm gutting all the wiring out of it so you can have your AC still with factory controls. 
and your wipers because it's all in the engine harness. Nice. And, and like the charging system. And we, uh, the thing I ordered earlier for you was a deal that Dakota makes that's yep. basically plugs right. in the OBD2 port. That way we don't have to have all these wires running into coolant yeah. sensor. Was yep. it oil pressure? Yeah, oil pressure, coolant temp. So basically it takes all the info from the PCM and just puts it into the dash. Nice. Of individual sensors. That's a pretty cool, and it was only like a hundred bucks. Yeah, so. plugs right into OBD2 port. Pretty cool module, so and then that's all the wiring basically on this side of the block. So this is this the is your, module from Dakota, right? Yep. So you won't. I mean, I'll have to do like the fuel level sensor, but like all pressures and temps and all that. That's pretty cool. Probably. I don't know if you're going to use cruise control. If we'll have to get that in there. Well, we might race ground. week in it. Yeah. You know. That's all electronic, really. So yeah, it, it is. It's in the electronic extra. throttle body. Yep. And then over here is the SpearTech harness. This is the harness that we got from SpearTech. It's really nice. Everything's labeled uh, like it should be. It does have a TCM for the 10-speed transmission we're going to be putting in this. And it's already unlocked via HP tuners. So it's ready to be tuned. This is a uh, fuel pressure. This is a fuel pump control module. Fuel pump control module, yep. Yep. So that way the computer's happy with the fuel pump and all that good stuff. It's also got yeah. a uh, low side pressure sensor yep. on there low as well. Side fuel pump connector, which we'll we might end up changing that. Yep. And then yeah, your OBD2 port, fans, ignition power, tack signal, which we won't have to wire that in. Brake yeah. switch, so it knows you can turn it on with pressing the brake. It's all factory connectors. They're nice. Yeah, that is nice. And it's, in a a nice, it's in a nice wrap, too. Yeah, the split loom wrap. They give you a, a grommet for a firewall. Oh, that's cool. It's not cut, though, so I don't know how they... That looks it. like the factory grommet, <laughs> like on the Camaros. Yeah. So I think you'd have to feed the whole harness through this hole. Probably so. But troubleshootmyvehicle.com. <laughs> <laughs> Tells Can't you get more. Pen. Can't get more. <laughs> I just Googled it. Luckily Directed than that. Troubleshootmyvehicle.com is where yeah. you can fire a wire diagram for an OBS Chevy truck. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. Steven, what you got there? It's dissected. So we so needed... Is, the... is this from the factory harness? Yeah, this okay. is the, like the charging harness or from the battery Yeah. to the alternator. Okay. And this one goes to like that power block that's on the firewall. Yep. Oh my God, yeah. Might try to use this. Cause it goes behind that shield yeah yeah we got that this keep is like it looking factory in there some of the ac wiring there's one other wire right here for your command or no for alternator. the alternator charge wire did you need any of this yeah so now this is this is like super nasty right here yeah it is what is that i don't know stuff? what kind of grease they put in here but it's gross oh my gosh <laughs> looks like tar yeah look it like even came through oh this is a good sign, people. We got an engine hoist. We have an engine. We have motor mounts. Steve's been waiting for this day his whole life. And it's finally here. It wasn't his first kid born. It wasn't his second child born. It was LT4 in the OBS build. <laughs> Okay, we got our elevated concepts motor mounts on. Uh, put some quick, uh, put a quick coat of paint on these things. They look nice. Uh, as you see, these are a solid type mount, completely made by uh, Elevated Concepts. We're gonna bring this LT4 over here, and we're gonna set her in. Probably gonna have to pick the front up, Pete. Go. All right, go forward. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Watch the frame now. <laughs> if you could stick a bolt in. Yeah. Cool. All right, there she is, ladies and gents. Got an LT4 on the OBS frame. We're going to lower down this cab just a little bit and just kind of see where we're at. We don't have the frame like in perfect position right now. So we're just trying to see for mock-up purposes kind of where we'll be sitting at. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, once we get on wheels. Okay, so we got the motor in. We got the blower lid mocked up on there. Um, really, the, the headers fit pretty good. These are the, the C10 uh, LT swap headers. Uh, frames very similar. Clears right here just fine. Right there is just the only spot it hits, but we can just grind a little bit of that there. That'll be good. The driver's side over here, um, the header tube is hitting the lower control arm bracket. I think we can cut this and then rebox it in just fine and then uh we'll pour 15 over it like we were never there but these are the the new mounts uh the dirty dingo mounts are adjustable so the motor can slide back and forth that seems to be the happy spot where the motor is at right there and of course uh once we get our cross member thursday we'll get the transmission sitting in there which is going to be the 10 speed that's mounted up on there <laughs> we did just for shits and grins we put a six gen lt header on here and it fits perfect uh but i don't know how it's going to fit with the steering shaft going through that's the only the only thing that uh kind of has me skeptical but if the steering shaft fits well a six gen header fits with a breeze on this side it does not fit over there though um so but that'll help people out that want some options but we're gonna try to get the headers to fit good on this thing and have it to where it's got some big old long tubes on it we got our elevated concepts uh, mid brace. Uh, this holds the transmission and it also braces the middle of the frame of this truck. Uh, so that came in and is non powder coated right now. Uh, so it also requires some welding. So we're gonna get that in the truck, get the transmission where it needs to go, and then we'll weld it all up and uh, we'll uh, coat it. This is gonna be our rack and pinion steering brace. Uh, it also comes uncoated. We're gonna get this in the truck and make sure everything fits as well. And then uh, we'll get this uh, coated and on the truck so that way it looks nice to match the frame and all this stuff. We did go ahead and put the rear wheels on. Everything fits good there. Clearance wise, we've got plenty of room here. Uh, these are a 275 Nitto 555R2, the brand new drag rail they just came out with on a 20 by 10 Weld S71 wheel doing header clearancing right now uh, i believe we almost got the the driver's side done he's been denting the header in right there to clear the motor mount because it tucks in so what so tight over here due to the steering shaft this is kind of how the bracing is going to be laid out this is going to be on the front part of the truck this is going to be on the rear part of the truck that is the transmission mount there the spots we'll have to weld is right there 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 and there so we're going to get that mocked up right now we're gonna go ahead and set the 10 speed transmission over here. This is a basically stock 10 speed transmission with some uh, clutches in it. So it does have, uh, we will uh, get that made it up there. Got the headers all clearanced out. So just so you guys know, the Speed Engineering uh, C10 LT swap headers, they do fit with just minor modifications. You gotta trim down there. And then if you're using the dirty dingo mounts, you just have to uh, dent in the header right this front primary. You got to dent in right back there where the, the mount is because the mount's a little bulkier. And then on the other side over there is pretty much good. You don't have to do anything over, over there. I think we got our poly cab mounts here. I don't know if these use the, the factory like, metal piece housings or... It says must reuse original hardware. Cool. So these are all poly, a little bit better than the factory ones. Nice. You also got the 10 speed bolted on the back of the engine. So now the truck's got a 10 speed transmission in it for the first time. And uh, right now we're working on getting this brace fitted on here. It's got the trans cross member and it's also got a brace that kind of braces in the frame here for us really good. So Steve's working on that right now. Then uh, once we get it all fitted, we'll uh, weld it and it'll be set in stone. 
also make sure getting the brace ready. welded in place right now had to make some modifications with uh this brace on getting everything squared up with the the lt4 and the 10 speed it was just a little off so we're having to redo some of it okay we got all four wheels on the ground for the first time um we're basically trying to set the cab down on the frame or at least get it close to that way we can make sure that the engine isn't hitting the firewall and everything before we weld everything in place for the transmission so um we're gonna do that right now we'll see how it all looks there it is all the way back on the ground first time in two weeks yeah we put these tape marks on there when we took this truck apart because the, the body cabs never left the lift so we put those tape marks to kind of help us line this up whenever we are at this point right now and it really did help us as far as I see, yeah, we're back. good over here. I'm not touching the front. Let me check this back. All right, is. there it is, everybody. Look at this thing. Got the engine sitting in there, and what it's going to be is future engine bay on the teal truck here. Everything fits really good. There's a lot of room. I mean, look there. at all the room. You know, I think we'd be able to set the regulator and stuff back here to make it nice yeah. and clean. All the fuel system, flex fuel, and everything can go back there. Yeah. We got plenty of room. We can we can set a damn turbo back here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're working on this Elevated Concepts uh, steering rack, and this doesn't even remotely fit over here. This is a really thick steel plate so i'm not sure what we're gonna do there um nice piece but not for 1800 bucks so we're gonna try to refit all this just kind of like how we had to do all the uh, the bracing in here how we had to recut and position everything there right now we're working on getting this uh, steering rack bracket kind of fit in there if we got to do some cutting or some welding we will we're trying to just minimize as much of that as we can. It's a really, really tight fit though. Yeah. Got the transmission subframe in, looking good. Uh, got it all coated and everything. Looks really nice in there. It'll be a nice addition to the chassis, stiffens it up. So got that going, get the steering rack. And then basically next up, we got a bunch of wiring harness and put the headers on, get the cab back down on the frame. So we're uh, getting this bracket in right now. We got this side in. This side over here, I'm not sure what the deal is, honestly. But if you look down in there, the bend, you can see <clears throat> right about where the dots are on the flashlight there. Maybe try to shine it from the back. Yeah. So right there, you can see where it's got a, you know, an angle in the frame. Well, this does not match up with it at all. And it's putting this whole thing in a bind, so yeah, I'm not too like sure. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's it's warped. <laughs> it's warping that yeah. steel plate right now. So I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut this straight down, or at least somewhat, because I don't see how it's going to work right now. All right, got the piece cut, so now we don't have to... It was getting caught on that corner right there really bad, and we couldn't get it to sit flat, so we cut that piece off there. I mean, it's holding the rack in. This thing is uh, that's a pretty solid piece. I've, I've seen racks held in with a lot, lot, lot less. Minor modifications required, right, Steven? Yeah, but it went in without a hammer. That's good. <laughs> Honestly, Steve, I don't know. It'd be better if he just had this plate go to the, like that deal and then over instead yeah. of trying to hug around the frame there. You think it would just make it a square? Yeah. Here. Really? Makes no sense. Got another bolt in there just for some extra strength. That way it matches the three bolts over there. So yeah, I think we're good, Steve. We'll just get it coated and put some paint on. Keep it. on going on. So some minor Ooh. modifications are required on the passenger side header. 
see we're hitting there a little bit and then right there because we did get the we did move the motor mounts around a little bit and move the transmission around when we had to get it set up straight because this motor is offset from the factory so got the rack bracket all painted that poor 15 stuff is the deal i mean if you can't powder coat something and it's clean metal i mean look at the shine on that thing i mean it honestly can't even tell and it's stuff you can buy at the auto parts store you know when you don't have two three four days to wait for something to get powder coated that is the way to do it matches the frame perfect with the powder coat easy to apply just put it on thick but the rack is all the way on now it all looks good so now the obs is officially rack and pinion steering for the first time ever got the new mount shells on fresh from powder coat Everything looks good. We got poly uh, energy mounts that are in between those uh, metal shells. So, you know, getting rid of the factory cab mounts, putting poly ones on there. Got the front ones up here. Pretty much got the front all ready to go. Um, everything looks really good. Got the steering in. Um, had a really productive week. We got the brace in, got the transmission set, got the engine in. Finally, got the steering all on. We're just waiting on our... Uh, ends there to connect to the spindles we have not received those yet got the gas tank all painted up and ready for that new aeromotive drop-in pump there it looks nice gas tank that is the original one it was in really good shape it just needed to be cleaned up and painted and as you can see looks great we got all the core support parts we got a new uh powder coated latch all the bracing we even powder coated the fuel tank straps black and then here's our beautiful core support, all powder coated, sandblasted. Looks brand new. That's going to look really good up in the truck. Uh, so really happy with how that came out. All right, we got the fuel tank in and the aeromotive pump slipped in there. As you can see, it's a direct fit for an OBS fuel tank. So looks really good sitting in there. Uh, we got the cab back on the truck and uh, now it's time. We're going to get this thing up in the air and uh, see what it looks like with the frame on the truck. Brody, it looks good, dude. Hey, she's square. It does look square. I measured from the back of the cab to the bed mount hole. Four and three eighths. No, that looks Do we great. clear? Oh yeah. This By the hair on the chinny chin chin. The little nub, that's what I had to take off. Oh, this little this little guy yeah, right, right there. there. Okay. Yeah, so it we did have to trim touching. that piece right up top, right there, off, just to clear the tunnel. But that was the it. Blanket feels like it's touching. Got the fuel cell, fuel tank cell. Yep, fuel tanks in. Got the straps all powder coated. Oh yeah. All right, right now we're working on the linkage uh we're going to be running the column shift up the factory column shift up on the column uh so the guys at low car make a flexible column shift dips or uh shift cable i should say and uh right now we're working on getting all that kind of worked out with how we want it to go i think we got a pretty good idea how it works i'm sure there'll be some adjusting and stuff once we get the truck running but comes with this this goes actually on your steering shaft that comes on the outside of the firewall there and uh all the necessary bracketry and stuff to get it all to work pretty cool little deal side down so here's the mechanism here this is the low car setup it's basically got a uh bracket here that's got a cable going to it and uh it's got the factory column linkage right here and uh, we're gonna raise it up in the air so that way you can see it all right, and there's the linkage right there. We mounted it on the side of the transmission instead of on the pan right there. It actually works out really well. It keeps it away from the exhaust that way too, which is kind of nice. We'll use a tab to hold it up. Yeah, and we'll use a tab. We'll just put it right there on the body. Keeps it out yeah, of the way real the nice. the cable to pull, and being on the bottom, it was trying to push it back past park. So oh, yeah. put it on the top, it has to pull it. Mm -hmm. or push it how we, how the cable was doing we need to put our uh, spear tech deal on there so that way we can get some fittings yeah see what right transmission lines we need yeah, let's aim them both up that way 
All right, so we got the block on, everything clears with plenty of room there, but this is so we can run a normal dash six or dash eight transmission cooler line to a normal cooler instead of like the factory hard line block that's on there. How's it gonna all right, right now we're trying to get all the steering fixed up on the truck. The, the next problem that we found out with the steering kit is the steering shaft is too short. It, it, it barely even just enters that when that's all the way on, there's no adjustments right there. So now we're having to uh, see what we can do to get this to work. Uh, probably have to buy a whole new shaft. I don't know, there's really no, <laughs> there's no one that's really done rack and pinion steering on this kit or on these trucks period. So it's just another thing that we gotta try to hurdle through. A lot of stuff done on the truck today. Um, didn't really video a lot of it cause a lot of it's pretty boring to be honest but we got the spear tech harness on um everything's nice and labeled they even pinned in a uh, flex fuel connector for us so that way we didn't have to pin that in ourselves so that was nice of spear tech to do that so the truck will be full e85 flex fuel uh we went ahead and ran the harness through this factory little inlet here are we gonna seal that up with anything you yeah got i'm gonna the... put that clamshell back around it so oh, okay it oh, okay yeah so he's gonna put the factory clamshell back around that so it'll look really nice um really we only had to get a couple things we were missing the the front sub harness that plugs into the oil pressure sensor and the dod sensor over here which we're not even using that anyways but we still need it and it plugs into this right here so i had to get that we're also needing a uh oil temperature sensor so i had to get one of those and uh just a couple other little weird sensors but uh yeah it's coming right along coming along good um we're gonna measure for the drive shaft now. I have a new steering shaft coming for it because the knuckle that was sent with this kit was too short for the factory steering shaft. So got one of those coming. It'll be a whole brand new steering shaft that goes into the knuckle that came with the steering. So got that coming. We got our fuel lines and all that stuff ordered and coming. We had to map it all out, see what we needed. Uh, what do we got next, Steve? What, what's uh, next on the plate? The interior wiring. Interior for wiring. The wipers and the brake lights which it all plugs in here and i gotta come i gotta figure out which wires for our starter kick for activation okay which it should be in here and should put a battery on we can almost start it yeah it's already pretty much wired battery the and whole fluids harness is on yeah one more so, plug wire getting pretty close <laughs> and then do we have a do we have the map mass airflow sensor yeah, that's yep, the map that's, it's like a factory alternator, GM connector. Sub harness. Yeah. And he said this plugs <laughs> right into the alternator that came with that kit. You yeah. didn't have to wire it. Yeah. Because it said OE plug. Where's the connector at? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it plugs. It plugs right in. Just bam. Bam. Don't get much easier than that. Pretty nice. Yeah. So right now we're going to uh, go ahead and measure from this flange here on the outside of it all the way to the center of the yoke right here. That'll give us our drive shaft link. It's pretty cool because the truck, the suspension really doesn't sag at all with this rear suspension on this truck. So we don't even really have to uh, do it on the ground. And then the, obviously the transmission ain't moving up here. So it'd be a pretty easy little measurement here, Steven. It's dash time. Steven's taking that factory cluster out of there. As you can see, 54,315 original miles for documentation. So here we got the glove box here. We got the actual uh, cubby out of it. We're gonna lay the PCM right here, which is kind of where the factory one. You said the factory PCM's in there? Yep, they mounted back in that corner. Yeah, so we got the dirty dingo PCM out. We're gonna see if it fits back there, but that's where we'd like the PCM to be. Um, right now, Steven is uh, putting the Dakota digital, not really digital, but Dakota gauges in there. The center is going to have all kinds of OBD2 information there, which is really cool. We went ahead and got the, is it the BIM? Yep, BIM 1 module. BIM 1 module. So basically, it plugs into the OBD2 port from the harness, and it activates all the gauges in, in here except for the fuel level sensor and uh, the speedometer. 
Which I guess the speedometer on this is calibrated with GPS, right? I, no, I think it'll do the speedometer too. From, oh, really? From the from the TCM. Oh, nice. Okay, so everything's going to be pretty much plug and place. So that way, you don't have to wire everything in here. That's a part you can get from Dakota gauges. It's a pretty neat little deal. It's it's only a hundred extra bucks too. So and then plus you can go through all here and it's got all your uh, uh, you know PCM inputs. So you can check like your air intake temp. Anything that's got a sensor on there and your PCM is going to show up on here now. What's up? We are heading into day 17 or 18. I don't know. I've kind of lost track, but a little over two weeks. Um, we have been running into a lot of issues with the steering rack and getting everything to fit. So I ordered a new, whole new shaft from Borgensen. And uh, basically right now we're trying to measure it up. I ordered one that was way too long. Uh, so that way we could cut the shaft down if we need to, to get it perfect but the good thing is we got a top end that works and a bottom end that works um so let's see what steven's up to right now trying to get this thing fitted all right so basically what we got here we got this we got this shaft um it is about twice too long right now so right now steven's measuring from there to there to see how long that we need to cut it down we can cut it down right here and uh we should have ourselves a full working steering rack and pinion system yeah. once we get this done yeah, this joint should be even better than the stock one. Anyways. Yeah, way better than the stock one. That thing's like solid metal. The other one was plastic yeah, and kind of cheesy. articulation. Yeah, for sure. And a double on the bottom. It'll feel more solid, I think. Yeah. So if you guys are uh, going to be doing this uh, Elevated Concepts uh, rack and pinion steering, uh, you know, if you watch the previous videos, I'll show you what we did to the bracket to make it fit over there. But more importantly... It comes with this knuckle right here, but the stock steering shaft wouldn't quite make it to that, even if we pulled it all the way out. So what I had to do is I had to buy a whole new steering shaft, and now we're fitting it to to size that we need right now. And basically, that's what you need. And then also, um, depending on what accessory drive kit you get, the, the power steering line that's supplied with the kit will not work for your application. So we're just going to have to change the line up a little bit. But yeah. nothing really major, just some modifications yeah. with our alternator being right here and the belt coming through this way it was just kind of rub the hose yep yep so we'll we'll get a hose made for it but steven's moving right along he's got the wiring done this is the wiper assembly here um he's also got this purple wire that's going to be going down to the starter to engage that just clean up some of the wiring now because the harness stuff from spear is pretty clean there's really nothing you had to do on that yeah um and then yeah, so we're moving right along here on the truck. We'll get the steering shaft going right now. All right, we got the drive shaft for the truck here. This thing is awesome. I tell you what, these guys, they're in Kansas City, Missouri. They make the nicest drive shafts I've ever seen. And I called them yesterday at 1 p.m. to order this, and it is 11 a.m. the next day, <laughs> and it's here. Uh, basically, on the 10-speed, on the you got this slip joint three bolt flange that goes on there so they they put one of those on there for us it's a pretty expensive piece but it's all billet and uh, that's going to go on the the 10 speed side and then we just have a standard 1350 yoke on this side so now we got a drive shaft steven one step yeah. closer and there she is boys that's a heavy duty judy right there yeah got two shafts yep got one shaft in now we got one more <laughs> get her in drive shaft get it in there all right another hurdle overcame here they uh sent this brace this basically braces it because you got this uh two-piece knuckle right here and it'd move around without this brace this was made to go over the stock size shaft obviously this new one we got bigger but at the end here it went down into the smaller size to go in this so we had just enough room in there to get the heim joint around there and look at that Spins perfect. Moment of truth, seeing if the drive shaft fits. Everything fits. Drive shaft fits perfect. Steven's getting after it on the wiring of the fuel system. We don't do anything half-assed here at Killer Performance. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this wiring job. It's got a weatherproof boot on there. Everything's soldered. Getting this thing prepped. Uh, went ahead and 
Just painted the steering shaft, so we'll get that back on the truck. And then uh, go back to getting the wires all cleaned up, seeing what we need, seeing what we don't need. Get the Dakota digital gauges in there. All right, so right now, uh, Steven's working on making the brake lines. We got rid of the ABS because it's kind of half ABS. So we're just gonna get rid of it, cleans things up, cleans up the wiring. So we're just gonna run the line right up into there, line right up into there, and uh, we should be good there. We got the steering shaft all the way on completely uh, braced. We also got the power steering lines all finished up. We end up doing a uh, PTFE line uh, for the high pressure side into the pump, just made our own. Got the, got the belt on, got the accessories all bolted, alternator on, got all the wiring done there. Uh, <clears throat> we also got the fuel system on, uh, complete all the lines ran, flex fuel's in. Obviously, we're gonna loom all this uh, open wires. We're just wanting to make sure everything works correctly first. All right, this is Monday, probably day 20 of the truck build. Right now, we are uh, uh, putting on the core support, just kind of lining it all up. We had everything powder coated, so it all got taken apart. Uh, but the core support turned out really good. Pretty much got the LT4 completely ready to roll. It's got the, the correct belts on everywhere. Uh, all the harnesses ran. It's got fuel lines ran to it. Power steering lines all done. Basically, today is going to be assembling the front of this thing. The transmission cooler mounted right there. This is going to be our heat exchanger. Uh, we got it nice and braced on there really, really well. Uh, one of that thing front and center. The cooler's still gonna get a lot of air right down there. Steven is bolting on the wheel liners right now. We'll have ourselves a completed looking engine bay here in just a little bit. We got some parts back from uh, paint. We got our new grill here. Um, it looks blue in the camera, but it's really more teal in person. But this is all black. Even inside the housings are all black all the way across i think it looks really cool how that turned out got ourselves a factory bumper had it color matched and then a new steel stock hood for the truck it's just a little dusty from being in the body shop but everything turned out really good got the truck up here rolling right along steve's got the transmission lines all done and routed over away from the header the O2 sensor clears, everything just fine. It's kind of a tight fit, but it's really not. It'd be plenty of room. This motor's solid mounted in here, so it's good. Looks like the header may have got damaged on the packaging there. We'll fix that when we make the exhaust. We got a special tool. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot we do have that. It's special like a tool. metal cone. You just hammer yeah. it in there. It makes it round again. Got the other O2 sensor in there, and we'll go up front here. Got the core support all on, looking good. I did get the bumper on. Everything looks really good. Paint turned out really nice. Even had the little license plate, light housings painted to match the color of the truck. It's gonna look good. <clears throat> this is an LMC bumper that you get. Uh, it's got the brackets, they already come coated, which is nice, and all new hardware. Uh, so yeah, if anyone needs a you know factory bumper and are worried about the way it fits, it does fit good. I actually have one of these on the 454 SS truck and it fits great. I mean, it comes with everything. It comes with even the little license plate screws. So props to LMC for making a pretty cool little reproduction factory part. We'll go up here. I believe we're gonna use this as the methanol tank because we have a different overflow for the radiator now that's gonna sit over here. Um, we just tried it and it does crank. So we have all the starter wires and all that stuff working correctly. So that's good. We got a cranking engine now. Hear yeah, let's hear it crank. Look at there. Heck yeah. Obviously we got the fuel disconnected. It's got oil in it, so. Um, and it's not a brand new motor. This was a motor out of the out of another ZL1, so it's a you know not hurt anything. Just cranking it like that. We got the intercooler pump mounted down here. It's going to be nice and hidden because we're going to have the air intake. It's basically going to be kind of hiding over that. 
Our fan should be here in just a little bit. We're actually going to go with a different style of fan uh, than what we we're originally going to go with just due to fitment. So uh, those should be here in just a little bit. Getting the meth methanol pump mounted right now. We're going to put it right there. The battery tray sits right there, so it'll be nice and hidden underneath the battery tray. You won't see it. Also got one cool little mod done while well, Steve was working on that. Got this new... <coughs> got this new built specialty wheel installed i uh been looking at that and someone commented on the last video that i needed one i was like shoot that's one of the things i needed to hurry up and get in order so went ahead and got one of those put it in there kind of updated the interior quite a bit and uh with those dakota digital gauges that are sitting right there it'll all look really nice pcm's over there fuse box fuel pump control module tcm's kind of hidden back there you can see it and then the glove box cover will go on there and then we actually have all the obd2 stuff methanol controls and all that stuff are going to be in there got this fender on it's not bolted in place yet but it is on um still got the collision wrap there on the freshly powder coated wheel liner there um everything's looking good though we got most of the wiring done over here all that wiring stuff that you saw scattered around the last video we got all loomed and run over here this is going to cover be covered that's all of our relays and a uh, junction box and stuff right there got our meth pump mounted right down below there battery's going to be sitting there so you won't see that either um now we're getting ready to mount the cooling fans and all that good stuff up right now All right, went ahead and mocked up the grill, the bumper, and we got the fenders blocked on. We gotta do some alignment stuff on the fender, but look at the stance on the truck up front. We're gonna put a little bit more narrow tire on the front so it tucks up in there, and we also gotta roll the, the front fenders, but that thing is sitting perfect right now. Almost there, Steve. Good. It's like a motivational yeah. pose right now. Yeah, I like how the girls turned out. Yeah, that thing looks incredible. Oh. Huh. Probably going to have to raise it up just a tad. <laughs> but, I mean, that that looks really good. Even, yeah, it's probably going to even settle even more. Yeah, I'll try to get a side. Yeah. The boot. Yeah, your shoe underneath there. Finish the wiring, all the interior, and what this nice cover will go over all the wiring in yeah, the factory. Yep. So you won't even know for the fan, you know, fan relay and the yeah, it basically all. just kind of sits over there like that. Yep. So, which that's there from the factory. Yeah, you it's just like a distribution. You reused it because so. you can't put anything on these battery cables. No, so they put that. No, and then figure out what tank we want to use for the meth yeah here, if we use a yeah guys we're trying to figure out if we're just going to use a factory coolant overflow tank because it's not going to be a coolant overflow tank anymore we actually have another tank for it or yeah. use the normal alky uh and have you know meth of, meth tank over that's there why we wanted the fender on to see how good it would fit here yeah so we'll have our hood hinge brackets come yeah. right here but we low on space here yeah guys it's we'll show really you tight. we'll show you what we're talking about so this is a really sharp bend rotofab elbow off like a you know a zl1 camaro and this is the problem that we're facing right now this i don't know if i can get Here, the camera in there this it's like almost into the fan it's not quite is it hitting right now no, it's, it's touching the shroud right there in the corner it's touching the shroud but it's going to be a really tight fit everybody and then we got to, you know, wind it back that way from going in the alternator. So, yeah, we are getting close. Well, it's I guess I got to mount the cordis tank still. But that's why we wanted the fender on. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I feel like that cordis tank is going to be a pretty easy mount. Yeah, I'll just put a nut zerd on the firewall. It should fit in there real nice. Oh, yeah, that, sucker, that sucker is going to look good in ball. there. Oh, yeah. That's about it. We'll still have some space here for... Yeah, I mean, who knows what we can put over here. All the room for activities. Yeah. Steve. 
You have a complete truck now. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Fed's back on. We're gonna lower the rear a little bit more. It's it can use a little bit more lower. Yeah, it's stiff. It, it ain't moving. Need to be that stiff. It ain't moving. <laughs> <laughs> Went ahead and used a uh, washer, basically the old coolant overflow tank for the methanol tank. It just looks factory. It fits there. It's very functional the way it's designed. So it'll be perfect for our methanol tank and it's plastic. We got to have a methanol tank either be stainless or plastic. So that worked out really good. Got the, the old uh, original hood lamp back in here. This is a little light that you can pull and light up everything if you get broke down the side of the road. It's a Chevrolet. You never know what's going to happen. Um, we still got to do the fans. We're getting pretty close there. We finally got the mounting stuff to do that. Mount the Cordis tank over there. Got the bed on, which you guys saw earlier in the video. And then we go in here. Um, we have some new items in here. So all the, the PCM and stuff I showed you on the last video, it's back here hidden. This is all just kind of loose. We want to make sure everything works before we mount it officially. This is our OBD2 port right here. And this is our Alki control methanol box that we can use to control the methanol. Um, I got some paint from LMC to... Uh, paint that gray but as you can see it doesn't really match very good so we'll probably have to uh, figure out what we're going to do there we got the new gauges in though check that out those things look freaking sweet um got the dash all together everything looks really good in here steven nice job you can show them the the wiring behind there if you want <laughs> oh is it just <laughs> pop off yeah i don't have it secure yet yeah it's kind of Oh yeah, so there's all the wiring back there. There's a lot of stuff shoehorned back there, people. So what do you got left? Mount the fans and then run the wiring. I made the harness for it last night. We got our mounts today. So here we got the LT4 sitting in the truck. Um, we went ahead and used that Cordis Performance. This is the C7 uh, auxiliary tank for the blower fluid. So it's basically like an ice tank. Got that, it's got a drain here that you can drain up the track. Um, we got the factory blower pump from a 19Z01 sitting there. Steven's doing that right now. It's also got a mount on the side here for a catch can. That's what Steve's working on right now, getting that mounted up. So getting that going there, we're using the Motion Raceworks dual inlet outlet can, which is a really nice unit there. Um, all right, we're getting radiator hoses right now for the truck. Um, looks like we got a pretty good match here. We're going to run this hose right here and then we're going to put it together with this hose that goes right up in here. This one was tough because the, the, uh, thermostat outlet was angled out this way, but it has to go all the way back this way. So I went to O'Reilly's and just kind of bought a few hoses. This one right here, I think will be a little bit easier to do. Steven's fitting that right now. Sure work. Yeah, it'll work. Got the catch can mounted. Uh, we're gonna get all the dash 10 line and stuff plumbed right now, so that'll be done. Steven's starting to uh, bleed the brakes. Yeah, so, I got fluid in all the calipers. Got, got fluid in all them big boy calipers there. It took the whole cork. It did. Whole bottle. Oh. So I think we need some more, maybe. Oh, okay. It's full though, so we'll be good to bleed them now. We'll just, you know. And I got some in our bleed bottle up there. Well, those calipers are only about the size of a... Hold about a quart each. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, that is a quart right there. <laughs> Where's the, the fluid at here? We'll just... It's about the same size. Uh, Actually, they're way bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right. He needs to get a new got the, these uh, shrinkable hose clamps on. These are nice. You basically just heat them up and yeah, they shrink down. The truck. Papers in the got all the hoses on. Looks good. We've got a couple little worm clamps. We're going to get those little heat shrink deals for these as well. Kind of just complete the look. Found Get close. Cut. Cleans the cuts. <laughs> okay, we're at that time. We're going to go see if it fires up. OBS truck build. First startup happening right now. Got its own quarter mile, eighth mile, and zero to 60 on the gauges is one of the deals. It's all GPS built in, so it'll be like its own little draggy in there.
the oil pressure gauge isn't working. So, I don't know what that is. Okay. It, it, it like, well, we might have to do like a program because like as soon as I turn it on, it already says fail. Like before we even turned on the engine or anything. Is the tack going? I didn't see the tack going. Either. Yeah, and the pedal doesn't work either. Uploading the file right now. It says we got a 2017 Camaro ZL1. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of kind of a ZL1, I guess. Call it the ZL Silverado over here. We need to come up with a name for this truck. It's got to be ZL something or... You know, Z06, Z06, ZL1. Yeah, see how, the see how the like gauge, it's already saying that it's got l no oil pressure, but the truck's like not even on. It's just an accessory mode. So I would say there's got to be something that just needs and set then up. When it was running. Well, yeah, when it run, it so. never even moved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're seeing right now, guys. It shows no oil pressure. It's it's got oil pressure though. We know that. Um, but it's like, it just says no oil pressure. Like right now, it's got the light on, and we just got the key on right now. So there's something going on. Yeah, those don't work either. Okay. We're a minute twenty seven seconds away from having ourselves an upload tune. We could show us twenty seventeen ZL one. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have a tune? Got the drive shaft on. Got the correct drive shaft straps, so it's good to go and. Steve is putting some trans fluid in there right now. These uh, 10 speeds are a sealed yield. They don't have dipsticks, so you got to basically jam the fluid up. We got this little deal that goes on a drill and it just shoves the fluid right in the trans that way. Loading our first tune in the OBS truck right now. Just tune sent us over a uh, edited stock file. We sent him the stock file and he uh, changed some things in there for flex fuel and. Uh, the you know dod delete and all that good stuff so we're gonna fire it up here in just a second <laughs> all right here we go we're gonna see what we got here i'm gonna turn my scanner on right you now Okay, so we are almost done with the truck. Uh, we just got it started up, and uh, really the only issue that we ran into was, like I thought it was, it was that fuel pressure sensor. It is a three wire on a 2017 Camaro, and what we have in there right now is a four wire. So we need to change the injector harness and that sensor on the back of the rail. It's pretty easy to do. We do just have to pull the blower off real quick. Um, it sounds like a lot of work, but it's really not. There's no uh, port injectors on these blowers, so you don't have to mess with any of that when you're taking the blower off. It's literally about 15 bolts and the thing just lifts off, you gotta undo the belt. So not the end of the world, uh, but we'll get that going. That way we have a pedal and we can drive the truck. So Prody's cutting a brand new uh, $750 C7 Cortez intake right now. <laughs> it's cut to fit, right? <laughs> it's cut to fit. This is gonna be for the truck. Basically, the way the intake's gonna go, that Cortez intake's gonna just 45 with the filter right here. Mass airflow sensor is already plumbed in it right there. This is the Rotofab elbow. This is gonna work perfect. I ordered a tube that way we could fabricate it ourselves, but the damn thing is on a back order, so I can't find any five inch pipe. So I saw that in the parts room and I called Joe Cortez and I was like, hey, can I cut up an intake of yours? He said yes, absolutely so. Sticking with the theme of our Cortez parts and also with the theme of trying to make everything bolt on on this truck build. Here is the engine finish bay, everybody. Look at this thing. This thing turned out amazing. So we used uh, most of a Cortez Performance C7 cold air intake. We got the C uh, Cortez Performance C7 auxiliary tank over there for the blower 
all the lines are all nice and done. Steve's gonna put a couple black uh, line separators there from Red Horse. But look at this, the intake looks like it was made for it. It's nice five inch, big gulper intake. We've got our methanol tank over there. Um, upper, lower pulleys. This thing just did an awesome job, man. Looks, incre nice. looks incredible. This is sweet. This is like better than what we were gonna do. Yeah, no. Really <laughs> yeah, I just started digging in the parts <laughs> room in there and I was like, well, I think I found the, the one, so. Joe is uh, like gonna a perfect bend in it too. Yeah, no, Joe's gonna send us a uh, another one too to replace it. We had that for a uh, Corvette coming in, so works out perfect. Actually, I think that was the ZR1 intake. Oh, Marlin. Marlins <laughs> got the perfect ride height here. But this is the this is the finished product. We got the billet hood hinges on. Uh, no more hood prop. It had a hood prop on there when we drove it in. Oh yeah, that's nice. They're strong too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got that. Want to show you all the inside of the truck, how everything's ran and mounted. That's the original book from the dealership when it was brand new. That's the packet right there. But all the wiring is back behind there. Basically, all you can see now is the OBD2 port. And we have the Alki control, methanol control box right there. Everything else is hidden back in there. The PCM, TCM, all that good stuff. We'll check all the lights. You can change all the colors on all the lights in here. We'll fire it up. Headlights on. Headlights off. Shift. 